one day. Well, I know this day. We we <laughs> asked for good games. <laughs> game one, we've gotten double overtime. It's a great game, and certainly you look at a great team at the Missouri Valley Conference. They have not backed down to a Southeastern Conference power, Florida. They have believed they could win this game from the opening tap, and they might very well do it here today, as we know. McKinney giving pressure to Hamilton. They have been able to turn him over a couple of times, once in regulation and once in overtime. A five-second call went against him and then a loose ball. And Grimes fouls Haslam, and that should be two. And for Haslam, that could make a difference because he's really been struggling at the line. And a double bonus. A total mismatch in low. Grimes trying to get around Haslam. Impossible with that big body. He gobbles it up as he always does. Foul. Creighton is going to have to do something different on the defensive end of the corner. They're going to continue to put the ball in Haslam's hands. Udonis now 7 of 14 at the strike. All in the second half. I mean, he's been living at the line. This time he converts both. But without Brody Darren, without Kyle Korver, Grimes is athletic, but he's certainly not physical. They can go to Haslam all they want. And on the defensive end, anybody, anybody outside uh, but Taylor, Florida's got to be happy with the shot. Given the lineup that Alvin's having to go with, a, a win now in double overtime with the personnel he has would be that much more miraculous. It'd be incredible. Really struggling to get organized, however. Taylor trying to go one on one, and they run two at him. Bailed out by DeAnthony Bowden. He's quick. A shot clock violation. 77-76, and you see Kyle Corver, who struggled in the opening round loss to Iowa last year. Today, 16-5-2. That really doesn't underscore how difficult it was for him to get off a shot. I mean, Justin Hamilton did a tremendous job on him defensively. Now Florida's trying to post up Bonner or Haslam. Tough pass knocked away by Taylor. Tim, Florida has so many mismatches. They have their choice if they want to go to Haslam or Bonner, or even Lee now. I can't believe Dana Altman ever dreamed he'd have this team on the court in a double overtime. This is one of those, uh, you got to deal with what you have remaining. And an offensive oh, foul against Bonner. Nice. So you talk about true grit playing defense with your feet. That's what Creighton's having to do here. Excellent by Lineman. Slot, uh, slid his feet very, very well, but Bonner thought it was too easy, so he just pushed off, didn't have enough patience. Creighton's had long and arduous tasks in their half-court game since Florida went to the 2-3 zone. Taylor now running in and out, inside and outside. Oh, my. Off the front rim, loose ball. De'Anthony Bowden gets it back out to McKinney. Somebody but Taylor's going to have to have the courage to knock one down here. This Florida knows where Taylor is every step of the way. Now he wanted the shot so badly that he forgot about reeling in the pass. That was just an anxiety turnover by Terry Taylor. 22nd of the afternoon for the Blue Jays. I hate to be redundant, but this ball's going inside. Well, oh, don't bother. It's You're going right. inside, Tim. In broadcasting repetition's a good thing. Inside Haslam. See? <laughs> that wasn't very hard to say. That was an <laughs> obvious fact. Florida scored 25 points off turnovers, most of them in the second half. Rhymes, that's a tie ball. Arrow to Creighton. The ball stays with Creighton. Here's Haslam, a man-child in low, just getting Grimes on his tail, and it's a mismatch in here. This could go on every possession for an easy two. Yeah, the moment you knew that this game was going to see a second overtime with Carp Corver out with five, it was clearly advantage Florida. Florida will know it rose. Bowden almost lost it. Out of bounds to Creighton. Last touch by Justin Hamilton. And again, those are the critical outs. Corver and Darren, one a low post player. Corver, the most versatile talent the Blue Jays have, player of the year in the league. Dabbert, the other physical player, really rendered a non-factor because he's not a scorer. Who's going to be willing for Creighton to step up and have the courage to knock down a big shot here outside of Taylor, who Florida knows where he is at all times? McKinney's rainbow woefully short. Lindemann, the follow. 
That may be the answer. A missed shot and a tip could be their best offense. Offensive rebounding. Sometimes it is your best offense. Under a minute and a second overtime. 23 seconds of difference in the shot clock and game clock. Bonner, yes, and a foul. Here we see Bonner coming off a cut to the basket. Linneman gets hung up on the screen by Haslam, powers it to the basket and gets scores. Yes, Coach Donovan. Now, he may be older, but he's still living vicariously through the players. John Pelfrey, one of his assistants, one of uh, the unforgettables for Patino and Donovan at Kentucky. Just as into it. He'll be a head coach one day. Still a two-possession game now. 45 seconds to go. Creighton down four. Uh, they need a good shot, whether it's a two or a three. And then take a timeout if they can score. Yeah, and they need to get it up quickly because it is a two-possession game. Time. Yep. Was that a timeout? <laughs> that was a timeout. <laughs> I'm on the sidelines. I'm an assistant coach today. <laughs> Here's what's coming up later today. Our second rotation of games. Penn and Cal have actually already tipped. So we're cutting into round, <laughs> round two games in uh, day one. You see uh, Hampton and uh, Connecticut, San Diego State, Illinois. That'll be starting 30 minutes after the conclusion of our game in overtime in Hawaii against Xavier. First thing Florida has to do is get the ball inbounds. They can run the baseline because it was a made field goal. That's a huge advantage for the offense. Any problem, Florida has four timeouts left. They should use a timeout in any emergency situation. Creighton's got to figure out who to foul and take their chances by fouling someone and hope they miss free throws. Well, remember Haslam has uh, missed half of his tries today. And of course, Florida's going to want to keep it in good foul shooters' hands. There's your timeout. Yep. He has a complete allotment to take advantage of, just as Eddie mentioned. We'll be back. Hey, you want to switch? Sure. Introducing the all-new Chevy Avalanche. The only vehicle that switches from an SUV to a pickup. Good idea. Chevy Avalanche. Motor Trends 2002 Truck of the Year. Avalanche, like a rock. Take all the time you want, folks. We'll take this one in red. Beautiful choice, sir. No, black. Black. That's actually my favorite color. <laughs> <clears throat> Definitely red. When software lets you quickly give customers what they want, that's one degree of separation. That's business with .NET from Microsoft. Both teams in the double bonus as you look at our game reset. The possession arrow to Florida, that's important. And uh, what else is important? Well, it's important that, uh, first of all, Florida get the ball inbounds. There's Billy talking to Bonner, trying to communicate what he wants. Have heart, young man, have heart. They need to get the ball inbounds. They cannot move, though. This is a spot throw. Florida's going to want to keep the ball in the hands of their best foul shooters. Creighton's going to have to foul. Any emergency timeout, they still have three left. Five-second call. Guard problems. Orion Green, Justin Hamilton, no Teddy Dupe. Once again, as unfortunate it is to, as it is to remind people, it's a factor. And a mental mistake, there's a not, another chance to take the timeout. That's why coaches save timeouts in emergencies down the stretch of close games. Uh, you see Brett Nelson's reaction, the shoulders just, uh, you know, begin to slouch, and you say, oh, how could we have allowed that to happen? We knew how many timeouts we had remaining. Very unfortunate for the Gators, but Creighton with new life with a depleted bench. Dear sir, Thank you for changing my son's life. He has said that if he makes it through basic training, he'll never be afraid of anything. In my proudest moment, I will watch my son march across that field with his head held high. Thank you for bringing out the best in my child. Graduation is just the beginning. Log on only at GoArmy.com. 
That's a foul, player. Hey, what? Hey, get out of here, man. That's the hack. Oh, man, got three signature moves. Hacking, hacking, and hacking. Whatever, though. If you quit, that fool ain't hard to shake. And, yo, it didn't even matter that there wasn't a rep, because I had these, the Nike Air Flight Elevates. You can't hack what you can't catch, right? You can only get them at Foot Locker. Orion Green taking the ball out of bounds on a crucial inbounds play. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004, 1,005, turnover. Nice call by the official. My rule, Tim, was when it got to three, timeout. Don't give the official a chance to maybe count fast. Mm -hmm. Billy Donovan saying, please, would you take the timeout? Please. <laughs> but again, uh, you know, those are times offensively, and I think that's where they miss Dupay most. Not on the defensive end, because Green and Hamilton can play defensively, but those kinds of breakdowns on the offensive end is where they miss it. I agree. He might have been taking the ball out of bounds, perhaps, Tim. Yep. Florida's sticking in the 2-3 zone. they got to know where Taylor is every step of the way. They must touch him, literally put a hand on him. They're going to put the ball in his hands, one would think, knocked away by Lee. 9.9 left on the game clock. In the second overtime, Creighton the 12 seed, trying to become the third 12 seed to advance in this 2002 NCAA tournament. Two got there yesterday. Carroll. Hamilton defensively, a scrum, out of bounds. Well, what a break. Had that been a tie ball, the arrow would have gone to Florida. Instead, it's out of bounds. Creighton now has it with 4.5. No timeouts left. Here's the deflection by Hamilton. Excellent effort. He tips it, and it's off of Florida. Still Creighton's ball. No timeout left for Creighton. Difficult play versus the zone from the side out of bounds. McKinney's a three-point shooter, as is Taylor. Bowden can drive. They don't have to have a three, but you'd think they'd be thinking that way. Taylor for the win. The game is not over. Now, how much time could be remaining? That could be a key. I think Billy wants to know that he should be able to get tenths of a second on the clock. Tenths of a second on the clock could mean everything in this situation. Absolutely. Here's Taylor off the dribble, crosses on Brett Nelson, jumps up with his athleticism, and back home the huge three. His eighth three-pointer of the afternoon. Wow! How happy is the Creighton Blue Jays? <laughs> Only one option for that team, and Billy knew it. They still couldn't stop him. Well defended on the play. Here's Taylor coming to meet the ball. Brett Nelson does not get head up. Boom, crossover. Get into the three-point line and bang it home. All right. Well, I tell you, I don't think he gets more than, say, two-tenths or three-tenths of a second left. I think it went down with .4 left. Look at Porver's big blue eyes light up. <laughs> Tim, you mentioned a tenth of a second is a big tenth of a second in this instance here, in this situation. Well, you can't shoot it. You can't. If I'm Creighton, i got to put somebody all over Bonner who's taking the ball out for Florida. you got to block his vision. You cannot give Bonner a good look to throw this ball toward their basket. Florida must throw this ball to at least the foul line area in the front court. And you can see Dabbert will be all over Bonner to block his view to make this pass a difficult pass. Four straight trips to the NCAA tournament and Creighton may have finally gotten into the win column for Dana Altman. That's it. The Blue Jays become the third 12 seed to knock out a number five. particularly given the players that they lost, both Brody Darren and Kyle Korver out of the game for the overtimes, and they advance. The winner of this game, of course, to take on the Illinois-San Diego State winner, our Chevrolet most valuable players for each team.
Terrell Taylor, eight threes in the second half, including the game winner, Udonis Haslam, our Chevy MVP for the Florida Gators. Well, the beat goes on. <laughs> Take that for the pods, Greg Gumbel. It was marvelous in Chicago today. Let's go to New York. All right, Tim Brando, anybody have any questions as to what this tournament is all about this time of year? The Creighton Blue Jays.